Hey guys, let's jump right into what makes your transformation strong. If you look at the screen, I've compiled a list of things that affect your damage output while transformed. I won't be going through the entire list. However, I want to point out that your transformation's attack does scale with your weapon's base attack. Storm Flash Long Stuff has the highest base attack in the game. You might be thinking, what about Dark Iron Stuff which scales its attack according to your defense? Unfortunately, it doesn't scale when you're transformed. So I don't really recommend using Dark Iron Stuff if your goal is to maximize your transformation damage output. As for Curious, I think Auspicious Lantern is a must for any builds with cost step. Zawis Basket of Fire and Water is optional, and Spine in the Sack is really good for poison builds. Lastly, for Spirits, first row is more of a generic buff, second row will be element specific. Now that we've covered the basics for scaling your transformation's base attack, let's start with the first transformation you get from the game, Red Tides. While being in Red Tides form, try not to use Heavy Attack because it uses too much might and does mediocre damage. When your focus bar is full, avoid activating your ultimate by dodging to the left or right. It does give you the most damage, however, if you're not close to the enemy or the enemy moves around a lot, you'll definitely miss some of your 4 hits attack. I highly recommend dodging to the front or back then activating your ultimate for single burst damage. This way, you'll be more consistent with your damage output. To maximize the damage output as red tights, the best way would be going to cloud stack, cast ring of fire and try to fight around your ring of fire. This way, you'll be able to use your ultimate more often. In most cases, you'll be able to cast your ultimate up to 3 times with the help of Ring Fire. Next up will be Azu Dusk from Chapter 2. The light and heavy attacks are quite weak. I recommend just getting hit and charge for Skull Crusher. To maximize your damage, transform near the enemy for additional damage. With the help of Ring Fire, you can use Skull Crusher up to 3 times per transformation if your might perks are maxed out. Skull Crushers do crit. If you're geared up with crits or got lucky with a crit hit, Skull Crushers can be pretty deadly. In Chapter 3, you'll be getting Ebon Flow. You normally would guard until you get max focus point for Windwalker. The downside of doing this is once you have enough for Windwalker, you won't have much might left for DPS in Windwalker state. The better way is to have 3 focus points or take an enhanced ginseng peel before transformation. Cloud step, immobilize, transform, then use Windwalker, then spam your light attacks. This is so strong because every light attack is a stagger attack. Alternatively, while being in Windwalker state, you can spam back dodge plus light attack. And each attack does about 1.6k damage. Ashen Stumber. You get this transformation from the Pagoda in Chapter 3. The strongest damage will be holding heavy attack to cast blow fire. Unfortunately, you can only do this for a maximum of 6 seconds even with Ring of Fire under you. For maximum damage output, I would always use Ashen Slumber by going into Cloud Stab for Auspicious Lantern buff, cast Ring of Fire, transform and instantly hold onto heavy attack. Stay around your Ring of Fire and repeat the same process. You can easily deal 3 blow fires in a single transformation and a self explode at the end. Sometimes you might find yourself in an awkward situation where your self explode doesn't put the enemy into scorching state. To avoid this, all you need to do is 2 light attacks just enough for a bit of blow fire then self exploding will put the enemy into scorching state. Our fifth will be Hawfrost from Chapter 3. As usual, to maximize your damage, have focus points ready, go into Cloud Stamp for a Spacious Lantern buff, cast Ring of Fire, transform near your enemy for additional damage, then instantly cast Ice Sheet. The area of your Ice Sheet depends on the number of focus you have. The more focus bars you have, the bigger your Ice Sheet area gets. Light attack to throw snowballs until they are frozen, then heavy attack when their chill state is almost gone. You can still cast a second ice sheet if you're fighting in your ring of fire before your D transform. Many don't know that there's a secret mechanic for Hawk Frost. Whenever you dodge while being in your ice sheet, you do frost damage if the enemy is close by, so don't worry about wasting your might for dodging. Umbro Abyss, one of the strongest transformations in my opinion. This transformation has a secret mechanic as well. Just like Golden Lightning, you are able to see through when Cold Heart is active. Very powerful if you are skillful. To do this, while performing light attacks, just as the enemy is about to attack, tap heavy attack. You'll see yourself automatically do 5 powerful slashes if you get the see through right. If you're bad at a game like me, the easiest DPS rotation would be Cloud Step for the buff. Remember to have 3 focus points ready, transform, or you may cast Ring of Fire, but I don't see the need, because by the time you're done DPSing, you'll be out of might. Once you have transformed, use Cold Heart near the enemy, then spam your light attacks. Just see how fast Umbral Abyss destroys Yin Tiger. Golden Lightning. What can I say? 
very strong but with slightly higher skill setting to use. To deal an insane amount of damage, your goal is to proc 3 sea trues as fast as possible in order to gain 3 focus points. The timing of the sea true is similar to using a spear weapon. Once you have 3 focus points, it's time to nuke your enemy by spamming 3 heavy attacks. It's so powerful that with a proper build, you can actually one shot Great Sage in his first phase with a single transformation. Violet Hell from Chapter 4, Daoist Me Side Quest. Normally, you would charge your blade, do 4 light attacks to infest lava, then cast Hive Mind. It's a very tedious process, I would have rated Violet Hell 1 star transformation. However, with the help of Weaver's Needle, you only have to focus on charging your blade with lava. Wait for Weaver's Needle to infest lava on the enemy 4 times, then cast Hive Mind. 4 lava on the enemy is the maximum damage you can do with Hive Mind. So make sure to equip Weaver's Needle if you're using Violet Hell. Cast Weaver's Needle before transforming, then start charging your blade. In an optimal situation, you can infest the enemy up to 12 times. Take note that with the last 4 infested lava, you'll have to detonate yourself to trigger the remaining lava. Dark Thunder, one of my favorites. You get this transformation from Chapter 5 after completing the Horse Squire quest line. If you transform into Dark Thunder without focus points, you'll have to whip your enemy to charge your focus bar for lightning infusion, and that takes a long time. So I highly recommend that you should only transform into Dark Thunder with 3 focus points. Once you have lightning infusion active, you may cast Thunder Dominion by tapping Heavy Attack. By tapping Heavy Attack once, you'll cast a Ring of Thunder on the ground, dealing thunder damage for 10 seconds. If you noticed, enemies in the Ring of Thunder get pushed out. This is where your whip comes in handy. You should actually whip the enemy back into the Ring of Thunder. This way, they'll get maximum damage from the ring. You may be thinking, that's too much work. You're not wrong. Therefore, there's another way to do this more effectively. Almost in every battle, there's a corner where casting your planting fan can get the enemy stuck. Once the enemy is stuck, you may start casting your Ring of Thunder. Note that doing this multiple times doesn't double your damage, but extends the damage duration instead. If you have Ring of Fire around you, that will be even better. With Ring of Fire, you may cast Ring of Thunder unlimitedly, as long as you still have Might and Ring of Fire active. And finally, Azura Dome. You get this transformation after the secret ending where you have to defeat Erlang and his boys. This transformation is the strongest and the most unique one, so I'll need a little bit more time to explain for this one. Your transformation skills are based on what you have equipped. So, if you have equipped Cloud Step, you get Cloud Step for your transformation. If you have Rock Solid, you get Rock Solid. This skill takes 2 focus points to activate. Rock Solid on this form is a little different. You don't parry with it like you normally do. Instead, you have an Iron Skin for about 15 to 20 seconds. Whenever your enemy hits you with a light attack, they'll get a light pushback, and so do you. As long as the attack has a stagger effect, you'll be staggered. If the enemy does a heavy attack, then you won't be able to deflect the attack with Iron Skin. It's fun to use, but I don't really recommend equipping this for high DPS output. If Immobilize is equipped, you get Ice Buff. This skill takes 2 focus points to activate and does frost damage with your punches. Effective against enemies who are weak to frost. If you charge it up by holding heavy attack with Ice Buff active, you'll launch yourself and slam down with a frost AoE attack, just like Stone Monkey in Chapter 6. If Ring of Fire is equipped, you get Scorch Shower. This skill also takes 2 focus points to activate. You'll do Scorch damage with your punches, same thing, effective against enemies who are weak to fire. Charge it up with Heavy Attack, you do a Slam Attack with a Fire AoE. With Plucked of Many equipped, you'll be able to clone yourself. Takes 3 focus points, so I don't really recommend this. If you have Life Saving Strand equipped, whenever you die, you'll resurrect, get a good chunk of might recovery, and your focus point will be charged. In my opinion, this is the best in slot. Your best loadout for this transformation is either Cloud Step or Rock Solid, depending on who you're fighting against. Rock Solid can be useful against enemies who can be deflected, same thing with Immobilize or Ring of Fire. As for the third slot, Life Saving Strength, period. As for dealing the most damage with this transformation, do my usual ritual, activate Auspicious Lantern buff with Cloud Stab if you have it, cast Ring of Fire, then transform. Make sure to have 3 focus points available. Use Scorch Shower or Ice Buff, then start doing Light Attack, Light Attack, Heavy Attack, and repeat this rotation. Make sure you have at least 1 focus point for this rotation. If you have Ring of Fire, then fight around where your ring is. This way you deal the most damage. Thank you for watching, I hope you have learned a thing or two, I'll see you guys in the next one.